let's have a conversation about what the duty to defend is and what it might mean to you. It's important to remember and not confuse the two concepts of the duty to defend and the duty to indemnify. The duty to defend is broader than the duty to indemnify. Let's take a for instance. If you've been sued and there are 17 different causes of action in the complaint and only one of those causes of action is covered under the insurance policy, does the insurance company have an obligation to defend all 17 of those claims? The answer is yes, they do. That's the difference between the duty to defend and the duty to indemnify because the insurance company doesn't have to pay a nickel of the damages for any of the 16 other claims, even though it has defended all of them in the same lawsuit. Remember, the duty to defend is broader than the duty to indemnify. Now let's talk about what happens when the insurance company sends you a letter that tries to explain that limitation in the policy. It's called a reservation of rights letter. A reservation of rights letter is probably half a dozen pages long, and everybody will get one every time you tender a claim. What it does is it explains the nature of the coverage under the policy, and then it explains the exclusions from coverage under the policy. And then the insurance company will say that it is reserving its right to make a determination of what is covered and what isn't after the case is over. The insurance company can even tell you that you might have to reimburse it for uncovered expenses if the case goes all the way to trial and you lose, or maybe even if you win. So the reservation of rights is an important thing for you to remember and study when you get it. Here's why it's really important. When an insurance company gives you a reservation of rights, it also takes on the burden of providing the defense. And what do they do when they have that burden? They select what's called panel counsel. Panel counsel is a group of lawyers that the insurance company has entered into a relationship with. They've vetted them, they know them, they have long-term relationships. They also have what are called litigation management agreements with those panel counsel. What does that mean? It means that the panel counsel, in order to get that bulk of insurance company work, has agreed that they will defend the case within parameters set forth by the insurance company. Here's what it could mean to you. Your chosen for you panel counsel, who gets 100% of his or her work from the insurance company is gonna defend you at the insurance company's cost. So it might mean that the defense you get on the covered claim is really strong, but the defense you get on the claim that's not covered, the claim that is excluded from coverage, may not be so aggressively defended because after all, the insurance company doesn't have to pay the claim if there is one under that un covered cause of action. So do you want panel counsel? No, you don't. When an insurance company issues a reservation of rights, oh, and by the way, they always do, because if they don't, they're stuck with, defend and, with defense and indemnity of all of the claims. So you know they're going to issue the reservation of rights. When they do, they've created a conflict of, of interest between you and them. When that happens, you get the right to pick independent counsel. That's called Cumis counsel from the San Diego Credit versus Cumis Insurance Company case in the middle 80s. When there is that conflict, when there is the potential that you can be exposed to claims that are not covered under the indemnity duty of an insurance policy, you get to pick your own lawyer your own cumus counsel. And that lawyer is prohibited from entering into litigation management agreements with your insurance company. Your insurance company cannot restrict, confine, limit anything that your cumus counsel wants to do in the defense of your case. All 17 
causes of action. So, whenever you can, whenever there's a reservation of rights letter, ask for cumulus counsel. One thing you have to be really careful of, ladies and gentlemen, is when you get a claim, when you get that nasty email from an unhappy client, you need to let your insurance company know right away. If you don't, you could have voided your coverage because of the failure to tender the claim timely or within the policy. And when that happens, and when the insurance company denies the coverage because of a late tender, that isn't a bad faith claim. So, what do you need to remember here? Tender timely, when you get a reservation of rights letter, call your lawyer and have them appointed independent Cumas Council.